take a look at artists in the past, um, I admire uh, one artist in particular, well, I admire many, but there's one in particular who played around with different surfaces. So he played around with metal and water and different patterns. And so that artist was MC Escher. I believe he was a Dutch artist. Um, I forget what years he was working in. I'm just gonna take a stab. I think it was like between, it was like right around the turn of the century of the, so it was like the 1890s to like the 1900s. And he was playing around with just different, different notions of uh, perception and things of that sort. So you could say, Mr. McAvoy, what are you talking about? Well, when I show you this artwork, I think you're gonna see why I love his work because he took these reflective surfaces, these opaque surfaces, these translucent surfaces, and he bent our ideas of reality. So let's jump over it and look at the work of M.C. Escher. So M.C. Escher, I think his work is so cool. So like, he would draw his portrait in a sphere, um, but then he also played around with like a marble, like something like that that's made of glass, and then something that's opaque, a sphere. So as you guys are working on your own, um, as your own drawings, um, you have been playing around a lot with these concepts, right? So you've been working a lot with spheres and things of that sort when you're on my website. And now we look at this right here, and I wanna teach you today how to draw something that's opaque, something that is uh, transparent, you can see right through it, and something that is shiny, reflective. Um, so I'm gonna show you the setup that we're working on today. And the setup that we're working on is uh, just right here. It's basically like a milk creamer, um, just a regular glass, and my coffee cup. And my coffee cup is so authentic, it still even has stains on the side of it because I was drinking out of it probably like 20 minutes ago. So um, we're gonna work on uh, all of these, and then we're going to examine the different qualities of light. As you, as you look at this, one of the things I want you to think of is you can do this in your own home and you can do it with different surfaces. So you can go get like a soup can or something like that and peel the label off of it. Obviously any glass that's like sitting around, you could just get a glass. Like I brought over like some of these glasses because isn't that cool? That would be something really neat to draw, um, something really neat to paint. This is a glass muller for making paint. Um, you can get all these different things. You can get something as simple as a coffee um, scoop. So this is like a tablespoon coffee scoop. Um, but you look really close at this, and I don't know if I can get that in focus. If you look at it, you can actually see your face in it flipped upside down. So there's a lot of fun opportunities uh, for visual information, for visual delight, just in the world around you. So with that, let's jump right over. Um, we are gonna just grab like a regular pencil at this point. Um, you don't need anything like, you know, s special. And we're gonna start at the far side of the composition where we're gonna be looking at the, the coffee cup that's on the right hand side. And we're go just gonna intimate, we're just gonna put in the outline of the cup. And if you want, you could even, you could even draw in like, the space for like three objects right here. So you can feel how there's gonna be three different things there. So this right here that I'm doing, it's a sphere and a sphere for a cylinder. And these are all things that we've covered in previous lessons. And so we have our cylinder right here. The coffee um, creamer is more so of a cone. So I, if I'm ever drawing a cone and let's say it has like like this has a wide mouth at the top of it. You can think of it as going up that high, it's a cone, and then slice it like that. So that way your eye kind of knows how to, you kind of understand how to, um, for, how to see that. And then the handle is coming right off to the side. So it's coming right off over here like this. And there is, creamer handle. Um, the coffee handle is kind of facing in a similar direction, kind of like greeting it right in the middle there. Um, you'll notice that my drawing's not like totally exact. Um, I, I don't really need to exactly get like this coffee cup. That's not like really like my, like my preoccupation at the moment. I'm just trying to get like something that is in the realm of these shapes right here. I'm using the biggest, broadest ideas. You'll notice on the top of the coffee creamer, um, there is like a little, almost like a little like spout 
um, and it comes out like this. Um, and I've chosen to not see that. So I, I'm gonna just ignore that for the time being. All right, so now let's go over to the object on the other side right there. And the object on the other side is a jar of peanut butter. It's a glass jar and I just scraped the label off of it for today's lesson. And simply put, I filled it with water. Like so. All right, so that's the basic shape of that jar with water. Okay, so let's go back to our inspiration. Um, we kind of lined up pretty much the same way, the same objects, just like different shapes, right? So now we are back to our paper. And what I'm gonna do here is I am going to, um, I'm going to knock out the one that we know the best. So definitely as a group, we know best uh, the coffee cup, which is on the right because it's opaque. And we've done a lot of stuff with opaque objects, but we haven't done a lot with um, objects that are translucent or shiny. I mean, we worked on the knight with his armor and you guys nailed that. Um, but this is more of a focus lesson just on the actual shininess of it. So again, so you can see that image and then I'll jump right over here. And there is the handle kind of coming down like so. It, it doesn't go in at a 90 degree angle. It kind of like has like two slopes that go in. So it's kind of like sloped that way and sloped that way. Maybe I could do it a little bit more symmetrical to be <laughs> a bit more accurate. All right, so if you notice, this is a very linear drawing at the moment. By linear, uh, we've talked about all these terms before. We're just focusing on the external contour, the outside line. We're not at all focusing um, on anything like, you know, like any like detailed information on the inside. And you'll notice that I might have a little bit of a different perspective on my drawing than you have in the photo there. The camera that's, that's taking a photograph of this is coming down at this angle right here and it's seeing it at a little bit higher an angle. So I'm looking at it a little bit lower. So you can follow either my drawing or you can follow the camera angle, whichever one you choose. And I just want these two arcs to echo each other right here. And so this arc can't be shallower than that arc is. Okay, so um, that is our external contour drawing of, of our coffee cup. And as an opaque object, we're just gonna blast it with light really quick. Again, if you've been on the website and done these live streams with me, you know this territory pretty well. So the light is coming. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna like kind of like falsify the light for a moment. We're gonna say that the light is coming way more from this direction. So draw your light bulb up here, like just your real scribbly light bulb, and it just goes like that, and the light is pointing in this direction. And then that means that there's gonna be shadow over here. When you actually look at the photo, um, uh, the video of the setup, um, I didn't blast it from the side uh, quite in the same way, but that's okay because I want you guys to learn how to invent your own shadows. So we're gonna put the shadow right here. And then we know that there's a little bit of reflected light that we're gonna see bouncing over here. So we're gonna just taper that off. Now, if we wanted to, we could spend the whole entire class, and we've done so, uh, just drawing something as simple as a teacup, a coffee cup. Um, but for our purposes right now, we're not going to do a highly rendered drawing. It's okay to um, leave something in a very raw, kind of like schematic stage um, and to not like focus like on like, oh, I want to have a perfect drawing of a coffee cup to hang up on my mom's fridge. Um, that's not the purpose of what we're doing at the moment. We're just kind of blasting in the idea of this cup so that we can move on to really what are the more challenging objects. Okay, so we're gonna even put a little shadow on that handle there. And just like so. Now, if you want, um, what I do, if I'm working especially on a schematic drawing that's like 
like like roughly outlined is I'll already get a blending stump or my finger, either one, and I'll move the drawing along quicker by going like this. And it's flying along pretty quickly. And just like that, maybe I'll put a little bit of shadow just behind it. And where the drawing has gotten a little bit um, blurred by like, let's say the side of my hand or just loose pencil marks, I'll just go in and I'll tidy up a little bit. And there we have the rough outline of a coffee cup. Now, um, I'm going to intentionally walk away from this rather than really, really, um, you know, push it to a level that's like, like almost like you can pick up the glass and move it. But I'm gonna walk away from this in just a moment. I'm just gonna maybe sharpen this up, sharpen that up right there. And with that, cool. All right, that's enough for that little demonstration right there. Now we're gonna move on to the middle object. And the middle object um, being metal, it's it's pretty, I have a, I have a funny story for this. <laughs> so. I went to a university here in New York, and I won't say the name of the university because I don't have the best things to say about the university, even though it's supposed to be one of the top universities in the country. Um, I got into the art class and the professor was like, okay, today we're drawing all these things. He was a grumpy guy. And he put all these objects out on the table and I had never painted anything with metal before. Now I said to the professor, I was like, oh, professor, you had said to us ahead of time to get all these like, different colors for the class. And so I had titanium white, and I had cadmium yellow, and I had ivory black paint and different things like that. But you have a metal object out there and I forgot to pick up silver paint. And my professor just went like that. He just like banged his head and he just walked away from me in like rage and anger. I was like, what? When you want to paint something metal, you need silver paint, right? And that's when my professor banged his head. I realized I said something really dumb. I didn't understand at that point. Nobody had taught me drawing. Um, as I work with you guys today, you might be thinking, how do I draw something metal? Like, do you get like, I don't know, like a metallic silver point, like pencil or something like that. But let's jump over to drawing and we're gonna talk about just trying to see things in terms of basic spots of light and dark. All right, so keeping with the whole idea of um, we could generally, we'll just put in a basic little like lip for the coffee uh, creamer here, but we don't wanna to spend too much time really like on the external contour of this. I'm more interested in the body of the creamer than I am interested in like, let's say the, um, the, the lip at the top. So I'm just going ahead and I'm gonna put in something very quickly as an outline. I'll put in the handle coming down here. And if you wanna see that image, there it is right there. And now you have the handle coming off to the side. And all right, so we have that handle, ta-da. We are all good there. All right, now you could say, okay, um, where do I even begin? Does light like come from here? Like, what am I gonna do? So here's what we're going to do. We're gonna take a long, hard look at what actually pieces of light and dark we see in the coffee creamer. So there's gonna be a lot of flitting back and forth for this. So I can see that on the side over here, I have a real dark, dark. Now, ordinarily, let's say like, you know, we wouldn't have like such a dark, dark, like coming from like, let's say theoretically like that direction. Like um, we jump back again to here. There's another dark, dark, like running right here. So all that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just chase after the patterns of light and dark that I see right in front of me. So now if it goes a little bit lighter, I'm gonna go lighter. Now, one of the things you'll notice is Every one of these marks goes with the 
outside contour of the drawing. So pretend for a moment that you're seeing the external contour kind of like fanning across the body of this. It's always gonna go in the direction of the plane of the creamer itself. And you, then you're gonna pay attention to the value of it. So this one's pretty light. This one right here is pretty dark. Right next to it, it's a little bit lighter. And then there's, from my per angle, which is a little bit different from yours, it gets pretty light over here. And right in the middle, you'll notice, so it's pretty light right over here, and right in the middle, it's pretty light right there. So, I'm gonna keep that pretty light right over there. And then where the lip is, it gets pretty dark. So right beneath that lip, it's pretty dark. And that dark kind of runs right across the whole entire thing. Okay, so then on the inside, you'll notice there's like kind of like more of the same game where it's like, it's gonna be dark over here, I think, on the corners. So, yep, it's dark over there in the corners. And then it's light right in the middle. Maybe I should uh, grab my eraser. This is my kneaded eraser. It's definitely my favorite eraser. I'm just gonna tidy up a little bit right here. And do you see how it's already starting to look a little bit metallic? I mean, all I'm doing is I'm just chasing after the darks and the lights as I see them on the object itself. Now, um, I've done a lot of paintings of, of still life objects. Um, a lot of my art career has actually consisted of selling paintings of like, let's say, objects on a table. Like um, I come from a very Irish family. When I was a boy, I lived in Ireland and I lost my accent. And um, I was born in the United States, but I moved to Ireland and then moved back again. Um, and so my family plays the violin, uh, the fiddle a lot. And so I love painting um, fiddles, like resting on top of tables and next to that, like, I don't know, like a pair of boots and then like a teacup or something like that. And so as I work on still life paintings, everything that I do in my still life paintings is what you see me doing right here. So I'm chasing after the patterns of light and dark, and I'm really just trying to be dispassionate about it and say like, hey, listen, I don't know what a coffee creamer is. I'm just gonna chase after the patterns of light and dark as I see them as, my, as they're like right in front of my eye. So like the irony of what I'm telling you is all these years later, and I've been a professional artist now for many years, um, if somebody says to me, I don't know how to paint silver, I'm like, in a way, I'm like, well, neither do I. And that's the cool thing about painting something metallic is you have to look at it and it tells you how it reflects the surface and you just record little pieces of light and dark. Um, I'm going to butcher this quote and you'll have to forgive me for butchering it, but Monet was painting somewhere, I think he was in a field, and somebody said to him, how do you paint? I forget what it was, it was like a barn or something. And he goes, there is no such thing as a barn. It's a piece of brown here, it's a piece of blue there. It's a piece of, you know, something greenish right over here. And then you put down those little dabs and then out of that, lo and behold, like a barn appears in a painting. And so that's what you're learning right now is we're just putting down little like, kind of like vertical slices of values some are very dark some are very light some are right in the middle and then all of a sudden out of that metal comes about so <laughs> learn from me you don't need silver paint um simply what you need is an eye to record the little pieces of information so i noticed that on the bottom of my creamer there is a dark right here that runs the whole entire bottom side of this just like that 
And so now maybe I've been working with a little bit of a, a lighter pencil. Um, now I might go with a little bit of a darker pencil and I might push it just a little bit darker here. And then you can start getting really specific and I'm not sure that it's evident to you as you look at this, but there's a lot of like little slices of lights and darks and you can start really going to town on this. And at the top of the lid, you'll see um, that it gets a little bit dark at the corner. So I'm gonna go a little bit dark over here. And then there's a band of light just right here. And whenever I wanna get like a real specific erased mark, then I'm gonna get, this is like a little handheld eraser. It's an automatic eraser that I really like. Um, but don't worry if you don't have that, you could just use like a little block eraser that does it just as well. And you could get this little lick of light that runs across right here. And it's dark also over here in the corner. Great, so maybe now I'm gonna get a much lighter pencil. This is a 3H pencil. And I'll try to get some of that gradient in the middle. So there's this nice like silver gradient and I'll try to get that right here. And again, dark on the inside. So I'm gonna go dark right here. And I am pulling the pencil in the direction of like how this turns. So it's an oval and I'm just turning it in the direction of that. All right, so now I'm gonna jump over and we're gonna to jump to the water glass. Keep in mind, all of these things can be pushed much further. Um, when you watch this video, um, um, at a later point, I'll be posting it. Um, you'll be able to watch it more highly developed. And I'll push all these to, you know, like a higher level of like what we call realism. I don't really like that word. I just call it, I say like, I get closer to the truth of the thing. So let's jump over to the water glass. Okay, so this feels pretty decent. That feels pretty decent. And now we're on to the water glass. Now for the water glass, it has a lot of the same qualities um, of the metal, where it's pieces of light and pieces of dark. So I go over here, I'm like, okay, for that water glass, um, what I wanna do is, there's gonna probably be, okay, there's a real band of dark over on the one side, so I'm gonna choose to see that band of dark over on the one side over here. And then you look back, and just take notice how um, maybe it is a little bit more difficult to predict where the lights and the darks are going to be when it comes to a glass. Um, with a glass in particular, I myself, I'll, I'll take like real pains to, you know, to, to focus on what the glass is actually telling me rather than, um, you know, looking at it and saying like, oh, I know where the lights are. I know where the darks are gonna be. So I'm looking over here, I'm like, okay, this is gonna be pretty dark over here. But then it lets up and there's a little bit more light right there. And then it comes back dark again over here. So because this glass is perfectly vertical, this one was a little bit more of inclined, right? Uh, the coffee creamer, but this is perfectly vertical. So all of our marks are gonna more or less be like vertical when we're working on the glass without any water. And 
And now I'm gonna head down to the lower part of this glass. And right now I'm just working with a 3H pencil. Um, don't really worry about it. Like if you only have like, let's, let's say like a 2B pencil or a 3B pencil, something like that, like you could use that, that's fine. It doesn't really make that big of a difference at this point. I'm just kind of getting in like a range of values. Okay, so one of the qualities that you'll see is the water goes from being really dark right here. It goes super, super dark right here. And then all of a sudden it leaps and it's very, very light right there. So in the interest again of really just paying attention to what I'll call nature, nature is whatever is actually in front of us. Um, so as I look right there, the water is like almost inky black there. So I'm gonna go like really dark right here because nature is telling me to do that. And then right above it is that light. So I'm just gonna leave this area totally clean. All right, so um, to push the drawing further, um, for this, I'm gonna also jump into the background a little bit. Uh, you can find the outside of the glass, and then you can put in a bit of a value for the background. If you want, you can just smudge that with your fingers to push it along quicker. Now, the glass gets much lighter at the base. So you'll see there's this real brilliant light at the base. Now, the reason why I said let's go into the background is, how do you get this to feel really light when everything around it is light? Well, the way to make this feel light is to make the drawing dark. So check out how it's really light right there. Well, if we want this to feel really light, we have to go really, really inky dark here. So there is the turn of the bottom of the glass right there. And we're just gonna make this like super, super dark just like so. And I want my drawing, I want the symmetry to be pretty good. So again, these are all just like sketches, but I want the symmetry to be pretty spot on. And what I might do in the interest of getting that even more accurate is I might go back to like a 3H pencil like this right here. and get that like really nice and crisp. Now I come back to this, okay, it's looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna punch a dark right next to it. So you'll notice that I put a real dark cloth down, this dark green cloth. And the reason why I put that down beneath my objects is so that they would really um, pop right off of that dark background. So right before the call, I had everything set up in a milk crate like, you know what, for my viewers, I want this to even pop more. So I just ran and I got a green cloth that I have in the studio and put it there. And now you can see that really lifting off. Okay, so now let's go back to our subject and let's take a look at what else is going on. All right, so we've kind of like mapped this out. I'm gonna use my blending stump uh, to kind of like accelerate the drawing a little bit and just fill in. This paper is pretty granular and with a granular quality of it, um, there's a lot of like what I call static. So when I push the blending stump, it fills, paper is made up of peaks and valleys. And when you're working on a drawing, um, if you don't use a blending stump, then typically your graphite is just clipping the, the peaks of all the mountains, but you don't fill in the valleys. But when you grab a blending stump and you push on it, you're pushing the graphite into the valleys. Okay, so that's going along a little bit better. Now I'm gonna find the back of the water is kind of like, there's like a moment of a dark line. Now things start to squiggle a little bit when you get to water as you're looking in, into water. 
you'll notice that the lines don't go perfectly up till now it's been perfect up and down you know more or less perfect stripes perfect like you know um everything in accordance with the outside external contour but now when you look into water things start to squiggle a little bit and the quality the see-through quality of the glass combined with the see-through quality of the water means that you're going to start to get like all these unexpected little warps and that's the fun of drawing water i think i think that's why artists through the ages have really enjoyed drawing water it's because it surprises you now let's look at our subject again and all right so we're getting closer all right so now we're going to go up to the top where there's like a corkscrew there's a there's a screw lid on this um we definitely won't have time to like i don't even think it's productive to get too detailed um just during the talking portion of this lesson uh with what's going on with the the screw lid um, but we can like allude to it. We can suggest that, hey, this at one point was a jar, like a, almost like a mason jar type thing. And so it turns at the top. We can like allude to that and that will definitely benefit our drawing. And as I get this kind of like information roughed in, like let's say with this, I'll quickly go back and I'll grab a harder pencil. So this is my 3H pencil. I'm going to go ahead and sharpen that 3H pencil. This is just a regular sh sheet of sandpaper. And then I can get a little bit more specific up here. So now I'm at the external contour and I'm just focusing on the, the screw points of that lid. And it's not perfect, but that will do the job for now. And I'll let that go. And then I'm going to jump over to this side. Um, one of the cool things about working with glass is the mystery of letting the edges go. So sometimes, like right here, I can't quite see what's going on on the side of the glass. It kind of melts right here. So in my drawing, I'm going to let that like kind of melt. If I can't see it, I don't draw it. So I enjoy that quality of glass. Now down here, it turns again. And there's gonna be a few more like dark lines where the, you can see the threads almost turning right there. So now um, I've said it several times, but it's worth repeating. All of this can be taken much further. Uh, but for our purposes in the class today, it's really a good idea to pair these all against each other so that you could feel them like in a way like I, I call it dialoguing, where when you put objects into a still life together, they talk to each other. And so when I talk like this, sometimes, you know, art students of mine through the years, we, we have a lot of fun in the studio. We laugh a lot and they're like. And Kevin, when your art objects talk to you, what do they say to you? Like, you know, they'll make fun of me and I love it. And, um, but you have to kind of like enter into something in a still life drawing, in a still life painting. You kind of have to, in a way, occupy it as the artist in order to draw it well. And people, you know, they'll ask me like, well, what do you mean by that? Like, that's really weird and nebulous. Like you have to occupy the object. Um, there's this interesting, um, interesting little segment by John Keats, the poet, and he says the poet is the most unpoetical of all creatures because he has no identity in and of himself. He's forever occupying the other thing. So if it's a sea, like a seashell on the seashore, he's he is he becomes that seashell. He's like in it, and he occupies it. You could say this is really weird, but think about it. When you're drawing an old pair of crusty boots and they're just filthy, they're just like seen a lot of dirt and a lot of life um and then you have a really pretty precious teacup you kind of have to know how those things are and then you have to see how they like might react to each other so i do that when i draw and i paint i like kind of like occupy the things I'm like okay 
And how do these things all react to each other? So I'm always comparing the one thing with the next. So there we have our object right there. And now we're back again to looking, let me see right here. Um, I'm going to reinforce the dark over here. And now little by little, it's starting to feel like water little by little. I look over here on the side. I want to get that real punch of light down here. And so that's starting to feel over here like water. I'm going to jump over, get a little bit darker right over here. Like, let's say I want to explore this area. And so, okay, there's a little piece of dark right in the middle. Some of the threads up here just punch a little bit darker for a moment. And so it just goes a little bit darker right over here. You notice there's a lot of mystery going on. And with that, I kind of have the beginnings of all these objects. Um, I am going to blend this a little bit so that it's in keeping as far as it's like a surface with the other surfaces. Maybe blend this a little over here. Again, I'm just trying to get rid of some of the what I call the static in the paper where there's a lot of like empty space where the graphite needs to be pushed into the valleys a bit more. So we have more or less done three different surfaces in an abbreviated way. We'll even put a little bit of value over here so that you could feel the light pop off of the creamer somewhat. Maybe I'll lighten this a little bit. And I would like to go back now to that dr amazing drawing by Escher. I just love this so much. Um, he used all of these qualities uh, that we have talked about in this lesson to do that amazing drawing. I'd, I'd say it looks like it's a lithograph and he used all these principles that you use today in order to get his face on there. So we could do something like a fun self-portrait in the side of like a coffee pot or something like that in the future. So.